influencers we're helping build an influence income impact with online video my name is Benji Travis and today we're focusing on channel audits and specifically we're gonna be giving advice on how to make your videos better you know oftentimes when you get a channel audit uh, people look at your banner and how many playlists you've got what your videos look like your thumbnails and even titles but today we're gonna dive deeper and actually look at your videos so if you're new to this channel hit that like button and let us know what is your channel all about and if you put your um, uh, channel name in the comments we'll be looking to actually audit your channel so let us know if you really want to get um, a little bit of uh, insight and today I've got a special guest Travis MCP he's a tech channel he reviews everything phones and you know he's been on the show multiple times he knows all about how to optimize your channel he's also a team member at vid IQ so he knows what he's talking about he audits channels all the time so without further ado let's get Travis on the show Travis thank you so much for helping me with these channel audits yeah super excited to be here last time we did this was lots of fun it seemed like a lot of value was gained so I'm always up for that super excited for sure yeah I'm excited as well and so we're gonna go ahead and dive into the very first channel which is the Swedish car guy by the way he is a member of the VI club so if you want to join and be a uh, prioritized for these channels make sure you hit that join button down below but this is the Swedish car guy and obviously he's reviewing cars I've actually seen his channel multiple times for me like real quick I'd say like I like the thumbnails they're pretty straightforward you know you see the car or the model that he's reviewing I liked all the different colors and you know like the use of text is where I would probably just improve a little bit because some of the text is so small you can't read um, what what's your initial thoughts on his channel page before we dive into his first video Travis yeah I kind of remember this channel from last time yeah. uh, it's not often that you uh, see a car um, channel with uh, the name Swedish in it like you, you kind of remember <laughs> Yes. which I'm going to start there. A memorable name is actually really important and a memorable, easy Good point. name is even more important. So those are just kind of small little tips. And I love the fact that, um, that I can remember that. So that really says a lot. Yeah, I agree with you on the thumbnails. I think the, the, the really bright colors are excellent because that's how you're going to get people to stop from scrolling. And then really um, beyond that, you need to the, the, the titling has to like hook a person in like, why am I going to watch this? Hook them right in, tell them the, get them to, to absolutely have to click. Um, but I love the bright colors for sure. For sure. And so let's go ahead and dive into the videos because one of the things we're going to be doing differently is we're going to actually look at the videos because let's actually bring it back to um, me for a second. The reason this is important is because channel audits obviously are very valuable, but it's all about the videos. I've actually seen channels that are doing great when it comes to views or crushing it with subscribers, but their channel's like, all right, because at the end of the day, it's the video that delivers the value. So let's go ahead and jump into this first video and uh, get into it. So the title is VWID3 Review, the new golf for the people. And let's go ahead and play it. And by the way, you can go ahead and talk through it if you want, Travis. Yeah, so we're starting off uh, face on, uh, talking to the person like that. I actually can't hear it, by the way. Yeah, you know, I, I personally think if I'm looking at this video, it's already been about 20 or 30 seconds. You need to show the car right away. Now, I know the thumbnail shows a car, but again, like people want to like make sure like this is the car I want to review or like that I want to hear about. And there's something about the visual of the car. I think that people connect with a face and look, he finally does about 50 seconds in. I don't know where it was, but that would be my first tip. Uh, anything else you want to add, Travis? Actually, this would be the opening montage I would, I would use as soon as let's it comes turn in, down the then, volume neutrally. I would, um, I, I didn't, All I, can't the way down. Hear, I can't actually hear the audio okay. by the way. I'm, but um, I, this is what I would have started the entire video with and then yes. gone into the face forward stuff. So literally just swap that edit around a little bit. Start with the, the, the reason that people clicked and then bring yourself and then introduce yourself because people want to see this first. So I totally agree with Benji. 
totally. You know, one of the things to always remember about any video, and this is why channel audits are great, not only for the channel content creator, but also anybody watching. You want to get right to the point right away. And by the way, we don't always follow that, uh, you know, always. But if you're just starting out and no one knows you and you have no authority around a topic, you have to get right to it. Uh, because when it comes to reviews of products especially even like i just um actually got a new car it's a used car but it's new for my life I'm right i want the information right away and i can appreciate somebody wanting to get subscribers so they do some call to actions but visuals 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 value value oh, okay. value um that is the the one thing i'd say about this video anything else that you you'd say like as we're like going into it I mean, I love the the visuals that he's doing with the car. There seems to be some really good. So I'd like to see more of the inside by this point, because yeah. you've shown so much of the outside. I, I naturally want to see the inside. Um, but I do like what what's going on here, especially if you're a car enthusiast. I think this would be a really interesting video to watch. But certainly, um, by this point, we're two and a half minutes in. I would have wanted to see a lot more of the inside by now, as well as maybe I don't know if he's able to drive it or not. Certainly, maybe the engine by now. Like at this point in. I need to see a lot because here's the thing. This is a nine minute video. Ideally, you want five to six ish minutes of view duration. You, you definitely want to check your analytics for that. And in order to make sure people are going to hang out for another two to three minutes, you need to show them, hey, there's a bunch of this stuff. And then you can go back and talk about it. Show it, talk, show it, talk, yeah. show it, talk. That's kind of how I do some of the tech stuff. And uh, another thing, and that we, we can go ahead and get off of this channel. Um, another thing I would also say is, I, I noticed that he was looking at the lens, or not, uh, he was looking at the screen and not the lens. It's such a small little thing, but imagine if somebody was talking to you right now and they were looking at your forehead or chin versus your eyeballs. Like it would be noticeable. In fact, you'd be like, hey, is there something on my face? And you'd like, it, it kind of distracts you subconsciously and just consciously. It, it's like a mental distraction. So really important, especially if you're using your phone, to look directly into where the, the camera lens is at. It's good to know where that is. And sometimes when I have guests on a live broadcast when we're using phone, I'll put a piece of tape there, especially if it's somebody that's not really tech savvy. Say, look at this little piece of tape and not the screen. I know that people do this all the time because they're conscious about how they look. They want to make sure they're in frame. But you've got to train yourself to know when you're in frame. You can look initially, but when you're recording, when you're live, you want to look at that lens. Um, any other last thoughts about that channel or anything um, that I just said? No, I think I think you're right on point. Um, and he's definitely made some improvements from the last time we saw him. So I just continue to tweak every little thing. Every little inch makes a makes a huge difference down the line. And so if you guys are watching, we are auditing channels like in real time. So let us know what your channel is all about. If you want to get a channel audit, um, the team is looking. And we actually have the next channel queued up. And so this is TT Videos. I'm a daily Fortnite streamer. And some people say, I'm pretty good. So <laughs> I'd say initially, I, I would love to get your thoughts on this. I'm personally not a gamer, so I don't know if you are. I would love to hear what, what your critiques would be or what he's doing well, what he can improve on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, 13,000 subscribers. Congratulations on that. And it looks like, for the most part, the views are in line with the subscriber count. There are a couple of times where it's kind of fallen over, like the, the swing shotgun video for some reason. Oh, that's actually looks like maybe it's a, is that a Nerf gun? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe the thumbnail left that one uh, <laughs> kind of using. Maybe that's what happened there. But um, overall, pretty good. The colors are Fortnite colors for sure. Yep. Um, looks like a little bit of a uh, Fortnite-ish type font, which is really important. And they're always using this kind of avatar as their face, which is kind of uh, funny. So I, I like that. Yeah, this is not a person who doesn't show their face on on uh, cam, so maybe they're doing this instead. Um, and I think it's really important to do things like they did four weeks ago, how to get the Logan Wolverine style. Um, so that way you're kind of you're taking Fortnite, which is big, and then doing like uh, superheroes, which is big, and then kind of crossing them together and making something interesting. And if you look at it, it's one of their best viewed videos in the last several weeks. So when you, whenever you kind of reach just outside of your niche into something more wide ranging, you may see some um, some extra views. Yeah, and so let's go ahead and dive right in. I actually don't have anything else to say because, again, we want to focus more on the actual videos itself. So let's go into the very first video. And I know with gaming uh, channels, it 
it's, there's not a lot. I don't know. I actually want to hear your thoughts on it. So let's go ahead and play the video and see what what happens. Okay. And just tell me what you think, Travis, as you're seeing him do his gameplay. So um, right off the bat, I can see the support creator thing, which so there's different philosophies on putting subscribe at the beginning or putting it at yeah. the end. Um, there, I'm going to tell you the facts and you can do whatever you like with them. Um, if you put a the call to action at the beginning, you are reaching the most amount of people. However, that does not necessarily mean that you've given them enough um, value already that they would subscribe anyway. Yeah. I would say the higher percentage of subscriptions are going to be towards the middle and towards the end because those people that are hanging on are actually more likely to subscribe. And you might actually annoy people at the beginning who might skip over that because they're like, I'm not going to subscribe. I don't even know who you are yet. Um, so think about that. Secondarily, um, I like what you're showing here, but some parts of it are taking so long before anything yeah. changes visually. Yeah. And look at your retention graph. My guess is there's these lulls where it kind of goes down and then when something changes, it probably spikes back up a little bit. Try to have something always moving on the screen at all times. There was such a long lull there. And I'm sure you were talking. I'm sure you were saying an interesting things, but you got to keep it moving on the screen. Um, I'm not sure what's up with this graphic, as, if it's part <laughs> of the game. Is it part of the game? I'm not sure. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and get out. Um, a couple of <laughs> things I would mention is I love that you have your avatar on your thumbnails. One thing that I've noticed, and I learned this honestly from PewDiePie, is when your face is in the screen, so it's called picture in picture. And in fact, let's do that real quick, neutrally, to show people what picture in picture is. It's when our faces right now, uh, Travis and mine, are in the actual uh, picture of the, the bigger thing. So if you could actually somehow have your avatar in there talking, I don't know if that's too much work, but this is one of the reasons why I think channels like PewDiePie work because you get to kind of see their emotions, their reactions. Travis, like, is that still common in the gaming world? And yeah. is that important? I think so because um, I, so reactions are a part of, of interest. Ironically, yeah. this morning I tried something different by doing a reaction video on my channel. I literally released a video this morning. It's oh, a cool. reaction. <laughs> in the bottom. I'm literally in the bottom. Yeah. Uh, kind of showing my reactions, different things that are going on the screen because not only are you watching what's on the screen, every once in a while you're wondering, well, what? What, what are they thinking? What are they yes. seeing? So if you're not embarrassed to be in front of the camera, I think it's a cool idea. For gaming, it's almost absolutely necessary. Um, yeah. the, the watch me play kind of series of games um, that used to work on YouTube aren't really a thing anymore. Best case scenario, I want to see what you're seeing. I want to see what you're thinking, what you're feeling. There's something more interesting about that. Okay, so uh, we've got that video that you're talking about that you just yep. created. And so if we actually make that full screen, people can see, let's go ahead and uh, move our picture in picture, get rid of us. But uh, this is exactly, I'm so glad that you did this. Go ahead and remove us. There you go. This is Travis, talk us through what's going on here. So yeah, I just decided to do something different. Um, I wanted to react to some um, reviews of some other YouTube creators. And I figured it would be fun. First of all, they're fun to do. Reactions yes. are just fun to do. <laughs> and there's so many cool things you can do. Like while you're watching the video, while you're, and in some ways you get the benefit of their editing and their their video <laughs> production and you just add yours on top. And uh, I just had a fun time doing it. So I just wanted to try something different. And uh, people so far have been liking it this morning. There you go. And so I'm glad that we could use that as an example. I think it's really important that, you know, the gameplay is probably the focus if you're a gamer, right? But mm -hmm. remember, as content creators are connecting with us, the host, and mm -hmm. I've seen very few channels where it's just purely voice. But if you're going to rely on the voice, you've got to be super animated. You've got to be entertaining, engaging. Your gameplay, like uh, Travis mentioned, like you just got to go boom, 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 boom. One of the mistakes I see people making is they just try to mimic what another creator who's already successful is doing. But there's a reason they can do things and maybe get away with not following the rules or the best practices. They've already built an audience love or fandom where it's like they just like hanging out basically, right? Versus if you're just starting on now you're already in it a little bit more and by the way a lot of this stuff we're talking about isn't just even pointed to your towards your channel tt uh videos um these are just general best practices and ideas for everyone so um any other thoughts or do we want to move on to the next channel 
Yeah, I think we can move on. But I think if you just do some of the things we've talked about, you'll see a, a, an even higher lift in your channel. But congratulations on 13,000 subscribers. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that is something to be proud of. So the next channel, Neutrally, I'm not sure if you got it uh, uh, um, popped up, is Eat Like Anna Pex, an mm -hmm. al uh, amalgamation of food-inspired travel vlogs on a quest to film and document food from every culture and background uh, with the intent to create something amazing. So, by the way, I'm a food guy. I have a food channel. I love taking uh, food photography and just eating and cooking. So, uh, I personally think I the the food shots are good. I think that the colors really will uh, you know attract the eyes. It's weird like green, they say it's not an appetizing color, but with, with food photos it's good to have it in there because it makes all the other co uh, colors pop. So um, good on you. I have never seen a food channel where you have uh, your face on every single thumbnail. Right. So I think that that's different. I think I don't, I'm indifferent, like whether it's good or not. I think that's, it's for you to choose depending on, um, uh, you know, what works for you, but those thumbnails are pretty good. I'm um, any, any thoughts on your end? Yeah. I think for me, um, most Show of that food, again, neutrally. Yeah. I think most food channels, depending on what they are, don't have a lot of a person in them unless it's a challenge video, in which case you're showing, a reaction to something. Some of these pictures of the food are excellent, but are covered up by something that is not really relevant. So mm. there, these these middle ones, like the hot chicken wing you should be eating. I want to see more of that chicken. I actually don't care about the person's face. It looks interesting. It actually looks very tasty. Um, and so there's a couple of these where I think trying to shove a picture of a person's face in there is completely irrelevant. Um, the the funny thing is the titling is really good. The actual composition of the photos in the thumbnail really good. Yeah. So. I, I personally would probably remove the person's face more times than I would use it. Every so often there will be something where maybe you're biting into the food. That's one thing. But if you're not adding value by just having your face there, if you're not eating it in the picture, then I don't really see the point. Yeah. Uh, let's do one thing before we watch that first video and let's um, see what your most popular videos are. So go ahead and neutrally and organize that to most popular. And I'm just curious what people are really resonating with. So, um, I mean, I guess that first example is, is mm -hmm. no face, right? Um, yep. Bringing you food inspired travel now must watch 121,000 views. Next one is barbecue food truck, San Francisco winter walk. Interesting how like everything we just said went out the window with that thumbnail, right? Like, you know, this is why I don't put so much weight on the thumbnail and titles. Um, I like to really look into the video. So let's go ahead and uh, put it back to his normal, uh, most recently, uploaded videos and look at the very latest one food vlogger food vlogger discovers perfect quest uh curbia cur I, I can't even pronounce that but it's the newest kind of craze right now when it comes to tacos so new say let's go ahead and get that up there um, um if you don't know what's going on we're doing channel audits today and but we're deep diving into the video itself so let's go ahead and press play Wearing a mask, good uh, best practice there for 2020. Oh, and then you turn, you took it off. But um, <laughs> a drone uh, shot. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. So uh, the first thing I'd say is like the food needs to be first or as early as possible. I it wasn't like dramatically late or anything, but you know, these food, are some good shots. Yeah, it's definitely I'm, great I'm shots. Good shot. I'm getting um, pretty hungry. <laughs> I, I know. I am right now <laughs> so again with the subscribe uh you know i think that and now you've got this kind of graphic and i know this is gonna not necessarily uh, this can be hypocritical because we have a whole intro that plays in our show but especially when you're first starting out i'd say like i don't know how many subscribers he has um neutrally um i'm actually curious about that but you definitely just want to get right to the point but also like don't put too many graphics now this isn't for you um uh what is this 
uh, eat like in a pex like I don't think you put too many graphics. I'm just suggesting this for other people. You don't want to overload it with too much, right? Like it's one thing to have visuals and mix it up, but you also don't want to flood it and take away from the point. One of the things that's hard when it comes to like more vloggy type of videos and auditing the actual video itself is it's, it's like your personality. So I think that if I were to have to judge that video, I like that it keeps me engaged. I was entertained all the way through. Travis, what are your thoughts? The edits were sharp. Um, maybe some of the choices of where you put certain shots could maybe be moved around, but everything about it kept moving. It was visually interesting. Um, I couldn't hear it, so I don't know, you know what was being said, but uh, it looks a lot better than a channel. What, what was the size of this channel? Yeah, let's go ahead and pull up the actual um, channel homepage, Nunchally. 5.78 thousand. Yeah, so I mean, it's great. They, they've they learned a lot, obviously, in that time because it, it's funny. If you look at a lot of other like food vlogger channels, they don't have the editing chops that this person yes. does. So definitely shout out to them. Yeah, it's, it's dope. Um, it's just such a minor thing, but remember, always look at the lens like you were looking at. And I think you were doing it at that, that time because you're trying to frame a whole bunch of people. But that's another thing, too, with channel audits. I think we can all learn and obviously Travis and I, like we're not uh, Mr. Know-it-alls, uh, we still have a lot to learn as well. And um, when we're auditing a channel, it's just some of the best practices we've learned from looking at so many different channels. But uh, even with us critiquing little by little on your video, it just takes time to improve. And that's the thing, you could have a perfect video and not a lot of uh, views because you know the algorithm hasn't picked you up, it hasn't like really shared you. Maybe you have to adjust your titles a little bit. Maybe you have to tweak your thumbnails. You just gotta get to that point. But it's important to upload, 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 always be getting better so that, that one day the algorithm just decides to feature you, you just hit it hard. And what you'll, what you'll see is if all these best practices are followed, a lot of your old videos will get views and get some traffic um anything else you want to add before we go to the next um channel 100 agree uh that was a great channel to check over and listen i i when we're done this i'm gonna, I'm oh gonna my chow gosh. down. My, oh my stomach gosh. is growling right now <laughs> and this is going to be a short channel audit travis so we'll definitely let you get going to uh, lunch um but let's go ahead and go to the next one neutrally and it, this is the johnson family farmstead and so jake and jennifer along with their son uh jace decided in 2015 to make a move to a two acre lot in northwest oregon uh shout out to the pacific northwest it was the biggest decision of our lives so uh what's like your first initial thoughts on their channel thumbnails titles so i used to live on a farm a long time ago a lot of people don't know that oh, cool. um, so it definitely harkens back to my my childhood um it's great that they're featuring the animals which i think is really important and the thing is what you'll notice is they're very simple and i think for the people that are going to watch this type of content you need to aim your thumbnails and titles to the people who are going to watch it you don't necessarily need these big youtuber thumbnails with like hours of photoshop when someone's looking at you know livestock like they don't care about that show them the animals show them what's going on tell them what's going to be in the video new milking routine like these are the things that people are going to watch this are going to enjoy so i think it's targeted correctly for the people that would watch this um i would say however that while some of these are maybe targeted better some are i, I, I don't they're not what's the right term i want to use here some of the titling isn't quite seo friendly enough and oh, I say that it. because when you're first starting out, you need to get a lot of views from search. And there are people who would probably uh, learn a lot from your channel that are maybe homesteading, farmsteading, just starting their own farm or whatever. So using things like how to how to milk a cow basics or, you know, something like that, just to get some a couple more people into the fold, so to speak, uh, to watch your content. But otherwise, cool. uh, we're done. Yeah, go to their most popular videos too. Again, so the reason you'd want to go to the most popular videos when you're looking at other people's channels is usually there's a reason those videos get a lot of views, right? So obviously you're on the right track. Um, oh, is this another ad? Man, we need to get you a, um, a YouTube Premium, premium right. account uh, neutrally. I'm so used to uh, just skipping the ads. But here it is, Johnson Family Farmstead, a uh, little... Um, initial graphic you've got the dogs going on is this a slow-mo is this the first right. thing that we're seeing by the way is this their most popular video neutrally yes it is it is okay so 
what's interesting is if I was just watching this and say I didn't know about the views, I would already like kind of critique it. But this is a great example of like, you never know like what will work for what audience because I can't really hear the audio yet. I don't know if you want to just slightly turn it up for me. But um, one of the things I would suggest is literally showing yourself in there because your intro of your channel is talking about how you and uh, your significant other as well as your kids moved in. So you want to show that if that I think if that's part of it. One minute in, you're starting to talk, and now you're showing your animals, um, and then yourself. But you know, it got how many views? Like a hundred thousand plus views, or forty three thousand views. I mean, that's significant um, for just starting out, for sure. What What are the lessons someone, including them, can learn from this video, Travis? Since it did get them a lot of views, keep it playing neutrally. Yeah, a couple of things. Number one, you definitely want to go into your analytics, look at the retention graph, figure out what people liked and what they didn't like. Um, look at your click-through rate, see if it's higher than normal or is it lower. But most importantly, believe it or not, is when you're in your analytics, look at the traffic sources. Did it come from search? Did it come from browse? Did it come from suggested? All of those traffic sources are treated differently by YouTube, and those people are looking for different things. So just real quick, 30,000-foot view, if it's search, they were looking for an answer for something. Right. And maybe they yeah. got it. Maybe search did so well that you taught them how to breed. Right. Because this is for breeding goats, I think. Then they got that answer, which means you need to do more of that. If it came from. Are browse, we about to see it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and take off. I mean, it's all good. It's, it's nature. But, but obviously, if it's about breeding, you're going to see that. But I just thought that was kind of funny that we were going to yeah. stumble on that. But yeah, keep going, <laughs> Travis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's about if it's from like the browse feature or, or uh, suggested, uh, then that means they were watching other things similar to it and wanted to see more of it, and didn't necessarily need an answer. They just wanted um, you know entertainment. So those are the things that'll help you understand what type of content will um, will kind of resonate with your um, y- your following. Totally. And so the, the reason I didn't want to talk so much, um, obviously I'm inviting Travis because this is his expertise and he knows what he's talking about, is because when you do have a video that pops, but it's not following all the best practices, or I would have maybe made some other suggestions, that is kind of the magic of YouTube and having a niche and having a tribe of people that connect with that niche in the way you do it. So always pay attention to the videos that hit and just like try to dissect it. Maybe ask some of the viewers, look at the comments, right? We're talking about analytics. Well, look at the comments, like what is it that they're really pointing out? I think the audience retention though is um, a, a no brainer. See where you have the spikes and views. So it's not just about like where they're coming from, what search phrases but what part of that video really was interesting i bet you anything now watching it it's because you see the breeding actually happening i I think that's completely appropriate for that video but i wouldn't be surprised if you go the johnson family go in your audience attention huge spike most people don't like uh get off the video like we did they stay on it and maybe rewind and so that and so now, do you really want to make your whole channel about the breeding? No, but I do believe it's something to remember because sometimes you can make the video much shorter, right? Like get right to the point and maybe you have a better audience retention percentage um, of video watched and do a little more um, commentary on that part. So not necessarily show the video, but like say, okay, so this is what happened and how it happened. You know, I don't know. I don't know what you would say in, in, in terms of teaching people about breeding but do that like get yourself on camera and like add a few more points anything else after that yeah (laughs) yeah you're probably right that's what a spike is Uh, i guess one thing to think about what i whenever i'm doing coaching for people um whenever we look at spikes we especially if it's something that we can replicate later it's knowledge so that means we know if you do this you'll get a spike Let's put it further back in the video if we can. We do want a teaser at the beginning to get people to know that it's coming. Like you'll yeah. see a lot of your YouTubers do that. They'll like tease later in the video, this happens, right? You want that at the beginning to get people to know that it's gonna happen, but you put it closer to the end because what I look for is, and I'll even give you a number. I've never done this before. Benji, I like you so much. I'm gonna give out this magic number that I All give right. to my coach students. 
I like to end my, um, and I know that uh, there's other numbers out there, but I like to have my end screens up at at least 40% retention or higher. Okay. Because I want at least that many people clicking on my end screens. Yes. I want to be able to move a person from one video to the next. If I can get at least 40%, and depending on how long the video, it might be, if it's a three minute video, it better be more than 40%. But if it's a 10 minute video, if you can get at least 40% of the people still watching when your end screens come up, you're going to see channel growth. There you go. You heard it. 40%. That was an exclusive here on Video Influencers. Thank you, Travis. Um, we're going to actually do one more channel audit. I'm having fun with you, Travis. I appreciate your time. Um, and remember, when we're auditing these channels, a lot of these channels, they definitely could learn from them or maybe they don't use it. Uh, what's important is just always be looking for ways to improve from upload to upload. Most of these channels, you're still at the beginning of your YouTube journey. Even if you're like 10,000 um, subscribers, it's still the beginning, like in terms of creating channel that you can monetize and make it full time for most type of niches or genres. So, um, I, you know, take whatever you feel like would work for you, even just test it out and just see like what happens, right? It's, it's all these different variables working together like a symphony that's really going to move the needle. So the last channel is the Asian My Show. I make videos to help the trucking community. What's up? mother truckers welcome to the asian my show and actually i i know i think i i've uh met this uh creator before yes we have um came to a video influencers event shout out to you i'm so glad that you brought this channel up jordan so uh what are your initial thoughts First, I'm zoom, uh, scroll up all the way to the top here. I want to see like, so 50,000 subscribers, super niche. I have like a little bit of context and background, so I'm going to hold my comments. Um, I'll let you um, throw out what are your first thoughts, Travis? First of all, this is obviously an entertaining channel. With some of the thumbnails, I mean, he has He-Man as one of his <laughs> Which just kicks me back. Of course, he does a YouTuber face sometimes. So I think this is going to be a fun channel. And if that's what's going on in your channel, then that's a great, you've, you've succeeded in letting me know that. I think a lot of times you got to tell a story between the thumbnail and title, and you're starting to kind of do that here. Um, the question is, like, what overall am I going to learn? It looks like how to build a fleet, how to buy your first semi. So if I want to get into this, it looks like I'm going to be able to learn what I need to learn. And that's great because that means I can perhaps safely subscribe to the channel after I watch a video to make sure that I vibe with it and know that I'm going to get the value that I want moving forward. One thing that people I think sometimes forget is when someone subscribes on a video, they are subscribing for a specific reason. Typically, it takes anywhere between four to seven videos, sometimes up to 10 videos before someone will subscribe to a channel. And it's because they've seen similar enough content that they feel confident enough to subscribe. If you're doing Fortnite here and vlogging here and food over here, it's unlikely they're going to subscribe. But this is telling me I'm going to learn how to get into this business and perhaps make some money. Totally. And one thing that's consistent is the trucking aspect, right? And it's it's kind of a, a super niche, but people don't know this, but truckers are one of the biggest group of workers in the United States at least. So there's a lot of truckers. And even though this was a channel that I know when he started it was maybe kind of uh, exploratory, it is definitely hit. And so I know this uh, a channel creator. I've met him and he's told me about all his opportunities. I'm glad that we're bringing it up because of course we're going to dive into the actual video itself. But what I already know about the channel and let's go ahead and tee up a video neutrally while I just like add my last thoughts. Um, before we look at the actual video is that channel is already working for him. He said he's gotten tons of opportunities in the trucking world. There's not a lot of creators. So in terms of brand sponsorships or getting like cool resources or connections, like I think his phone is blowing up. He puts a lot of his information on his about um, page as well. So he can get, uh, you know, connected with people. But let's go ahead and pull up that first video and uh, check out the uh, video. So new so you go ahead and... Um, there's a He-Man uh -huh. there. I love it. That's fantastic. And by the way, if you're ever using your YouTube channel, <laughs> that's a hook, ladies and gentlemen. That is a hook. Yeah. This is a hook. If you've ever wanted to know what a hook was, this is literally it. What a fantastic intro for a video. 
<laughs> <laughs> and well, obviously it's Halloween. I don't know if it's recent. Um, okay, so he's answering his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Which is even funnier, really. <laughs> uh, that's great. I mean, I'm obviously going to watch more now because how can you not? Um, but that's what a hook is. So I, I don't know. At the end of the day, if you have gotten me interested in the first 30 seconds, by the way, I want to point something out. Whenever YouTube um, puts something in analytics, you should pay attention to it. And what you'll notice is recently they added a new thing where it looks like um, they're, they're, they're ranking some of your videos by retention of the first 30 seconds. Oh, interesting. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that, but it's in, so I don't know if everyone has access to it, but they do have a new section where you can rank your videos by retention of the first 30 seconds. And if YouTube is showing you that, there's a reason they're showing you that. Yeah. And this is a great uh, reason to show how you can hook people in. in an so, way. I mean, like the last channel, there's not a lot to watch, in my opinion, because you're already doing your thing. And what I would say about this channel, like other ones that are very niche, but obviously have some level of success in their world or in their industry is keep on doing it. This is a great example of like how you level up because I'm sure a lot of the earlier videos were talking head, but what Travis mentioned about the hooks, so creative with the, the uh, He-Man outfit and putting your dog and yourself in like different aspects. It was so fun. Like me and Travis probably don't have a lot of desire to become a trucker, like have any interest in that, um, that, that life, but we're watching this with joy and laughing about it because you got creative. And so um, I'm so glad that you're still doing a thing. This dro this video is talking about how uh, truck drivers will all have their job during the, uh, the pandemic. Um, and I agree because look, everybody's, uh, you know, ordering from Amazon. I, literally, I see the Amazon people every single day is so crazy, even on Sunday sometimes. All right, so news to the, you can go back. Um, uh, there's, not a lot to critique there. You know, one of the things I want to uh, remind people is all the best practices sometimes go out the window when you just figure out your own style and it works for your audience. Those thumbnails had way too much writing for what I would suggest to people. But for whatever reason, like trucker, truckers are connecting with it. I definitely think it's worth a try to clean up the thumbnails, like make them a little bit more simplified and see if it works. But... Mm -hmm. You know, you probably don't have a lot of uh, competition in that world. So it, you do your thing, and I, I just love the channel. So anything else you'd want to add or any last thought? Because that's the last channel we're going to audit today. Yeah, I it actually just – I was in the middle of thinking, thinking of something when he, <laughs> he did the He-Man thing that completely threw me off. But what I was going to say was when you have a YouTube channel that is a basically a funnel for your business – um, what, the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is you don't need a lot of views to make yes. that channel worth your time. You yes. just need the right views. Um, I, I, I know Benji has talked to a lot of companies that have used YouTube as their funnel. I've talked to many uh, businesses where if you had a video with 500 views, that could be enough to get you business for two or three months, depending on what your business is. So success for different channels is different. You don't need 50,000 views to be like, oh, I made success. If you have a small business and you're getting 300 views and you're getting two or three leads from that, you've had a successful video. So um, views are not everything. It really just depends on what you're what you're trying. Totally, to and that's why sometimes when someone asks for a channel audit, but I know they're already crushing it and doing really well, I take it with a grain of salt. Like I say, take this with a grain of salt because. I've actually met content creators who are legit millionaires from having fairly small audiences because whatever they're selling, whatever service they provide is you know, a very exclusive, very niche type of audience. So I, I use the example, if, if you review yachts, okay, mm -hmm. sometimes they can be $100,000, a couple hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, right? Well, you don't have to sell very many yachts to kind of make a living, right? Like whether that's a referral um, commission that you make. So um, the more niche the channel is, the better for you when you're first starting out, as long as you know what how to connect. The reason um, the Asian My Show really works is because he was a trucker himself. I think that he still is a trucker. Uh, it's been a while. It's been, a, man, I want to say like a year or two since I met up with him. And, 
you know, when you're in the industry more, I feel like that's a unique thing because you really can understand what's important to your audience. So uh, a lot of people oftentimes will get off of, uh, you know, they'll quit their job and move into YouTube full time. And like Roger Wakefield, for example, well, he's still mm -hmm. a plumber. Like That's another crazy thing too. He's another channel we interviewed recently. So uh, good for you. Thank you to Journey to Wellness for the super chat. We really appreciate you supporting this channel as always and everybody else that was on. Um, any, uh, and then also Shark Gomp also um, gave us a super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, Travis, any last thought? That was really fun to audit all these yeah. channels. Uh, what are just the final takeaways and the last message for uh, the viewers here on Video Influencers? Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I can tell you as a creator who started out just over three years ago that I spent a lot of time to get to wherever the heck it is I am right now, which is on video influencers, which is awesome because I used to watch <laughs> videos all the time. But legitimately, um, it, YouTube is probably one of the hardest social media platforms to grow on right now. It really, really is. But I can also tell you that it's absolutely possible to grow on this platform, especially if you take advantage of the information that's being given out, especially here. As someone who has taken these steps, done it on my own channel and seen the success and then also helped other people do it, I can tell you this is not just a bunch of words strung together to sound nice. It is literally the secret sauce. So absolutely, positively, you can do it, put it in the work, and it can happen word and you guys can find links to travis's channel down below or just type in travis mcp if you guys want some legit phone reviews uh that is the place to go travis thank you so much everybody have a great weekend keep crushing on youtube and i'll talk to you later peace out